Git is an open source version control tool. It's a distributed version control tool. I'll get back to what distributed here uh, means. It was mainly designed for speed and efficiency. Most version control tools can be categorized into either central or distributed environment. In a, central, in a centralized uh, version control environment, we have a central repository and we have developers committing their change into the central repository and bringing in the changes other people have committed into their local by updating their local. Now, this works good, and this has worked very well for the last few years. But in case of network latency, or who doesn't like to work from a coffee shop? I do all the time. And people disable my VPN when I'm in a coffee shop, and I can't connect to my repository. While you're traveling, where you're in the airport, of course, we don't want to enable VPN and give everybody access to our, local, our central repository, right? In that case, I can't commit anything to my central repository. I also cannot check the history of my current source. So I'm kind of limited here, which leads us to distributed version control system which has a central repository. It also has local repository for every developer. Every developer has a copy of the repository at some point, and they can keep committing their work into their local repository. Eventually, when they're back on the network, push the changes and update your local by pulling the changes from the central repository. Even if, the rep even if the central repository goes down, all the developers have a copy of the central repository. So the snapshot, you can just bring the central repository back by pushing one of the developer's copies. So backup is definitely an advantage there. You don't have to have like a maintained backup. The other advantage is Git following this architecture of distributed version control system has allowed us to do multiple operations with no network access, such as accessing a file history. What are the changes have done to these files or people have done? You can just access your local copy and read through all the file history. You can also commit your slices, chunk of work, by separating it. Pick a task, complete it, commit it, move on to the next task with no network involvement. Finish that, commit it. And when you're on the network, you can just push all your changes at once. You can also merge branches. You can branch out of the repository. You can branch out of the sequence, put your own sequence in, and then switch between the two sequences. You can also obtain other revisions of the file. You can also switch between sequences or branches, as I already mentioned. And it's so much more easier to set it up. How do we set it up? You just have to download the installable from Git SCN, and they also GitHub also provides a server to host most of our open source projects for free. They'll, they charge a little bit to keep themselves running uh, for private projects. So if you're working on a open source project, you can host your own project at GitHub.com. Now let's go to the demo part and see a little bit of how this could all work. Okay, all right, I do have Git installed already. I might be on a little bit of an older version here. I think they're on 2.8 right now. So the first thing I will have to do is create my project, right? Um, so I'll start initializing. 
and call it demo. So that's how far I go. What this does is adds the demo project with the directory. Now when I go into the demo, I will see that it's also added a dot git directory, which is basically the heart and soul of a git repository. We can dig deeper into what um, this repository or how git manages with manages all its version files if we look into this. So it basically saves, it's very lightweight. It, it compresses all its files and saves the references, objects, all of it. Most, each object is, none of the objects are more than 20 bytes. So it compresses it with a SHA-1 algorithm and saves most of the objects within the .git file. Now, if someday you wanna un-git your project, all you have to do is just eliminate the .git directory there and you're basically un-gitting your project, if that is a term. Excuse my ignorance here. So now that we have created a Git repository, what we have to do is put some file in it. So I will open up a first file and my first file, okay, I've exited. Now let's ask status, what does Git think? There are two things here that we have to pay attention to. It says on master branch right here, on master branch. So when we create a Git repository, it gives us a default branch to work on. And master, it names the default branch master. We all keep it as masters. For some reason, we just like to keep it as master. You can of course rename it. And the other thing to notice is it's also warning us about untracked files. The file that I just added, first.txt, is not yet tracked by git. So in order to track it, it's suggesting I do a git add and then the file name. What add does is including the file in my next commit. So any change I do that, any change I've done to that first.txt first file will be included in my next commit. When I say commit, I'm just gonna submit my change here with a message, my first commit. There we go, I've committed my work. So far I have not involved um, the central repository. So let's get the central repository started, shall we? I have created my username in GitHub already. If you have one, if you don't have one, it's a great place to create your name. You can just keep contributing to all these open source projects by forking and just requesting for access and submitting. So it's, it's a great place to create your username. I know we, we, create, we log in and create so many accounts these days, but GitHub, trust me, is a good one to create your account with. And to create a new repository, you just have to click new repository there. Oh, uh -oh. <laughs> I think I do have to. Okay, well, I. <laughs> I was on it. <laughs> Thank you. So now we really know that we were not on the network, hey? I wasn't lying when I said that. <laughs> this was all intentional. I totally planned this. Tech support, tech support. <laughs> Thank you, calling Ross. Ross. Oh, never, come on. Ross, come on, come on, Ross. <laughs> Should we get it? Do it. <laughs> um, okay, don't. thank you. So, there I am. I'll just say my demo. 
as the name of my repository, create it by just clicking the button. Now, if we notice, it gives me um, a link to my central repository, which is remote repository, once it creates it. I have to get back to my local and link it. How do I link it? Remote add origin. Origin here is the name of my remote repository by default again. It just gives a default name and that's origin. Now that I've linked these two, you still don't see my first.txt on my remote repository, right? How do I do that? Git push origin master branch. So that will push all the changes I have to their central repository. That easy, hey? Eh? Means just booting up a new repository and pushing it all. Okay, now we have a repository. I've been working on it. Um, we have all been, let's say we have all been working on it. There comes a critical defect and we have to get on fixing it. Now that I have a stable built, what I'm gonna do is get branch and I will allow my coworker Alice to work on it. So by doing branch, I'm just creating a pointer or a reference to where I am at my workspace, okay? Now, if you see, I have two branches. One is a default branch, master, and the other one is Alice, where she can go fix the critical defect. But, you know, I don't feel like fixing any defect, critical defects. I just want to play with my first file, be a little excited about the first file. And we again have to do a git add. Each time you manipulate a file, you have to select the file to be participating in the next commit. So I do a git add, git commit, and you commit with a message. Let's say excited commit. There you go, now I've committed and that's my second commit. Now, uh, let's go help Alice with, the, with her defect, shall we? How do I do that? Check out, git check out Alice. So you just do a git check out a name of the branch and you switch to that point of reference. So the reference point was before my excited check-in. So it was just my first check-in. So if I see the first file, it's, I wasn't really excited about my first check-in back then. So it's brought us back to that reference. And here, fixing it, fixing the defect will be basically just adding a fix.txt file. I wish everything was that easy. Okay, fixing stuff here. And then git add again, we know the drill by now. You can also do a dot to basically select all the modified files. And then git commit, fixed it. Okay, so we've, fixed, we've taken care of the defect on a different branch. And my workspace currently looks something like that. So we ha I had a commit on my master branch and I branched out to the Alice branch. Meanwhile, I also did, I was excited about my first check-in, so I modified my master branch. So we have these three nodes, but we want to bring in the defect fix back to my master branch and merge it. How would I do that? In order to do that, I just simply go git check out master. I have to get back to my master branch because I'm bringing the changes from Alice branch to my master branch. And git merge Alice. It's, it's providing us some uh, default messages, so we accept the default messages and we're all good. So now we have the changes 
Let's see how the log looks like. One line. You can create aliases for um, a lot of these commands. You don't have to type in. You can just um, create, like, get LOL for a log or something as such. It's easier to keep track of. So what we did right now was to have a first commit, and it's showing the reference ID over there. And then we branched out. Meanwhile, we went back to our, we were in our master branch, did an excited commit. And in the Aldous branch, we did some fixes, fixed it, and committed that, and then merged it all together. And that is the point of reference for my master branch, which is my current branch. This is how, that's how the graph looks like. Now, if you, if you notice here, it's also showing us the reference point to all my different branches. So this is my remote repository, and it only has my first commit copy. So I haven't pushed anything onto the central repository after my first commit. But I've been able to do multiple commits and merge stuff and switch between the branches. That's the magic of Git. It's very lightweight. It keeps references to objects instead of saving the actual object. So 20 bytes, that's all it takes. And the first seven characters of the 20 bytes that it's saved is being displayed on the graph there. Now, if I want my remote repository to have all the changes, I do a git push origin master. So going back to my git repository here, I should have my first file and then my fix file. If you see here, you should be able to see. Also notice the time zones on these files. They've actually carried over the time zones from the commit time and not just when I pushed it. So when a change is made, it keeps track of the time. And when we push it to the network, it keeps track of the time there. So we go see the history of a file that's all intact here. You can comment on GitHub. You, you don't have to have a separate tool for code reviews and stuff. You can do all that right here. So that's a small demo of Git to get it started. Hopefully, I have started all, or I have motivated all of you to look into Git because it's an amazing tool and we have been using it for years. And the kind of things that it can do does not, it doesn't stop to amaze me up until today after three years. Great. Okay, do you have any questions or Thank anything? you so much, everybody.